Before beginning today, I want to say a word. Um, a year ago, it had been my hope on this Memorial Sunday to lift up and celebrate Lola Davis Edwards and Rupert Twink Starr on Memorial Day 2022. But some of you may remember, I hope all of you do, that just days before Memorial Day, there was the terrible slaughter of innocent children in Uvalde, Texas. And so everything changed for me as a preacher and I hope for all of us as we shifted gears. It is a blessing that on this day, as we celebrate, Twink is about to turn in July, will turn 101. So since last year, he hit the 100 mark. And since last year, Lola hit the 100 mark in February. So today we celebrate you. And if you could stand, Lieutenant, Second Lieutenant Twink Star, I'd like for us to thank you for your service to this nation. to see that everyone's standing for him. He didn't see that. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. He was talking to Fran and didn't see any of you standing, so <laughs> I wanted to make sure that he saw it. Let us uh, join our hearts together in a spirit of prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Patriots and Pentecost people come in all shapes and sizes. When Lola Edwards was born in February 1923, she was so small, they wrapped her in a blanket put her in a shoebox and put her down by the heater in their house to keep her warm. It's what you might call the first incubator in America. She survived her early arrival and then went on to have an amazing life, beginning with her service to our nation in 1945, immediately following the end of the war in Europe. She landed in La Havre on Christmas Day, 1945, and it took an entire day for them to get to the docks of the harbor due to all the sunken ships in the harbor. They traveled to Paris in a convoy, and when they stopped for the night, they were told not to go off the gravel paths because the entire area had still been filled with landmines. So needless to say, she listened to her commanders. <laughs> Once in Paris, she spent several days taking inventory of the surgery and sterilizing everything. That included the needles and all the gauze, which were rewashed and reused for the new in need of bandages and healing. They had POWs working with them there, and the POWs were so impressed that Lola knew how to work the sterilizer. Although she had never been specific about the surgeries, she has told her family they were performing surgeries in Paris, some of which she had learned surgical training for at Greenbrier before going to France. And they were doing cutting edge surgery on back and spinal surgeries. Think about that, 1945, doing some surgeries that no one had done. She was present the night the Eiffel Tower was relit by General Dwight David Eisenhower, Charles de Gaulle, and Winston Churchill. Mother of nine, and I don't want to go past that too quickly, mother of nine, servant of God, and one of the most kind human beings I have ever known in my life, Lola, or Zimmy, as her family calls her lovingly, dedicated her life to family, to faith, and to service. 
Here at First Church, we recognized Zimmy in 2022 as our Lay Leader Award winner. Rupert Starr wasn't much bigger than Zimmy at birth in 1922, but his father, a doctor, and his mother, a teacher, knew that their little one would be a shining star all the days of his life. He would be their twinkling star. By 21, Rupert, or Twink, as everyone calls him, had volunteered to fight in World War II. He was a student at Ohio University at the time. By 23, now second Lieutenant Starr, had seen the horrors of war and combat, had volunteered during the Battle of the Bulge to run a message across enemy lines to get to the other side in the Bulge to tell them about what was coming. And in that move, fearless move, was captured as a prisoner of war. And I said this earlier, Twink, it's a miracle that you survived the capture because at that time during the Battle of the Bulge, many know that the German troops were killing American soldiers that they were capturing. The fact that you made it through that is a miracle in itself. But he was held first by the Germans, but as the war came to an end, by the Russians, and I remember you saying, the Germans treated you somewhat better than the Russians did, and they were our allies, just saying. But after the war, he came back, came back to Ohio, came back to Mount Sterling, and then on to Athens, where he began his life again as a student at Ohio University. He came back and he said to his mother, every day from now on is a free day and I am going to do something worthwhile, accomplish something every day, every single day. You have made good on your promise all the days of your life, Twink. Twink Starr would go on to become one of Columbus's leading realtors in the 1950s and far beyond. He was to share his life with his life partner, Alan Wing Wingfield, for 53 years. He would become a log cabin Republican, an outspoken opponent of the military's don't ask, don't tell policy, and was part of the group that overturned that policy on behalf of gay soldiers. Thank you. He gained notoriety for his part in the documentary Courage Under Fire, and then in 2009, at the ripe young age of 86, Twink was the Grand Marshal of Columbus's Gay Pride Parade. Last year on his 100th birthday, the New York Post and many other media outlets around the world were carrying stories about Twink Star, the LGBTQIA champion, an all-around wonderful man was lifted up and celebrated worldwide. You need to know there is no one in the history of this church more famous than Twink Star, except Washington Gladden. That's it. He's the man, all right? <laughs> he is truly the man. In just a few weeks, Twink, you'll hit 101. Zimmy's 100. The two of them embody more than 200 years of patriotism and faith. Thanks be to God for their witness. By this Memorial Day, Twink and Zimmy have buried more family and friends and fellow soldiers than any of us. They have been to more Memorial Day parades and remembrances than any of us. And they have lived their patriotism in real and practical ways longer in most cases than any of us. We seem confused these days by the word patriot, sort of like Christian has been hijacked by those who wouldn't know Jesus if he came to their birthday party, Patriot has been hijacked too. It is used most often and most fervently by those who storm the Capitol instead of protect it and defend it, wave a Confederate flag higher and more fervently than a U.S. flag, and see single-issue politics as the defining characteristic of what makes America truly great and what does not. Although some of these people may be patriots, they are not the only ones, and they don't have exclusive rights to the term.
Calling yourself a patriot against someone else doesn't make you a patriot. Patriotism is defined as a person's feeling of love, devotion, and a sense of attachment to one's country. This attachment can be a combination of many different feelings, language relating to one's own homeland, including ethnic, cultural, political, and historic aspects. To be an American patriot, in my mind, means to love all. Love all the ethnic, racial, language, cultural, and political differences that make us who we are, because we are vastly different. That's what makes us a great nation. Our unity comes through our diversity. That is what Twink and Zimmy have embodied collectively for over 200 years. Thanks be to God for the patriotism that they have shown me and all of us as remarkable Americans and heroes of our church. Today we celebrate Memorial Day and all the ways people in our lives have served our nation and our God faithfully and well. Today we also celebrate Pentecost, the feast of God's Holy Spirit filling the earth with all her creatures and cultures. To do this, we are invited into the feast. Beginning with the Gospel of John, we can see the progression of early church's reflections on the Spirit's effects on the Christian community. John begins by opening the window on what looks like the upper room where the disciples have recently celebrated the Passover with Jesus. But now, after his death, they've locked the doors, they've closed the windows, they've gathered together in fear. Without warning, and Jesus as the risen one is notorious for this, without warning, he enters and stands among them, bidding them shalom or peace. Showing them the marks of his wounds, he again offers them my peace. Then summarizing what he has said during the Last Supper with them and mirroring God's gift of life to the first humans in Genesis, Jesus breathes his spirit into them and sends them out to carry his vocation to the whole world. Luke tells a different version of the same story in Acts, describing how the disciples had encountered Jesus for 40 days and then after spending 10 days waiting and praying in silence and again in darkness, the Holy Spirit shakes them out of all their inertia and impels them to assume their apostleship. Be who God has called you to be is the message there. Thus begins an incredible centuries-long adventure of broadening horizons. Starting with the disciples' amazing experience of being able to tell Jesus' story to all the nations under heaven, this adventure continues for centuries, sending disciples to all people everywhere, to all cultures everywhere, and to show them the movement of God's love in their lives. Although impelled by the Spirit, this evangelical adventure has never been easy. At each new step of the way, God has called Christians to broaden their outlook to question their dogmatic assumptions, and to ask the Holy Spirit to guide them. That's the process Paul's describing in his first letter to the Corinthians, where he speaks of rejoicing in the Spirit's diverse gifts. He teaches that every gift of an individual, a people, or a culture manifests the Spirit bestowed to the entire body. So they're showing what God's love looks like. It can come as a gift to one, but it's a gift to the whole. After the events of Jesus' life and after the Pentecost comes to fruition in what we know in Acts 15 as the Council of Jerusalem, we all become witnesses to the growth of our faith through the centuries. Periodically, in the Christian story, we will see major leaps forward in our faith. I believe one of the great major leaps in the Christian community came during the Reformation. The Bible there took center stage and the church opened itself to the world and everything around them in new and exciting ways. It was a time of preaching, teaching, and musical revolution and revelation in the church. It changed the way we do Christian. In the 20th century, the rise of the Pentecostal movement and the Roman Catholic Church's Second Vatican Council from 62 to 65 opened the church to modern ways to look at the world, to look at culture, and vast varieties of experiences of the Holy Spirit were moving everywhere. And I believe now, post-COVID, we are in a new movement of the Spirit today. 
We are all trying to figure out where God is working in our lives and how God is making all things new in our lives. It's scary. It's exciting. That's what the Spirit is all about. Wherever something is scary and exciting, the Holy Spirit shows up. In the movement of the Spirit across time, we are always seeing exciting and frightening things that move people to new faith and hope. So what does Pentecost mean today? In the 21st century, where no part of the world is unreachable and every language is translatable in an instant, this is the time to appreciate the unavoidable and blessed awareness that we are all a part of one another, that we can no longer think in terms of them and those, but only us. That's what the Spirit is showing us today, and I'm not sure how it will all work out, but I do know this. It brings patriots and Pentecost people together. As we celebrate God's Spirit presence in, through, in and through creation, let us abandon our locked up mentalities. Let us venture in mind and body and spirit to new places, to interchanges of the wild and wonderful variety of what the Spirit will show us in this time. And let us acknowledge and celebrate the fact that Pentecost is ongoing. It's never going to end as long as we are the church. I believe on this Memorial Day and Pentecost Sunday, we are all being called to be patriots and Pentecost people. We are God's holy and blessed ones, living in a time and a nation in flux. We are called to listen carefully and respond thoughtfully in these times. We're called to pay attention. And I would add, each of us is called to follow the life examples of Twink and Zimmy, who have dedicated themselves to live as patriots and Pentecost people and have shown us a good way, a beautiful way to be the church. Thanks be to God. Amen.